Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to present you with Countdown to New Tax Policies. I'm Margo Mastery, your Harfeld CFO, and I'm going to share with you tonight more about all these updates from the different policies that are happening in the news. So in this webinar, I'm gonna show you some Biden tax laws. By the end of our time together, you're going to learn some strategies on how to pay less taxes. So do me a favor, turn off all distractions and please come and give me your full attention. I prepared so much good stuff for us tonight and uh, whether you're live watching the replay, um, I'm, I want you to just get your full attention here so that you could benefit at the best possible uh, highest level. Um, so a little bit about me um, from after servicing clients for many, many years, my company has one uh, top three in New York the past few years. And this past year, I was awarded to be one of the top financial uh, 100 influencers. And it was a really exciting uh, award to receive. And a lot of this was sharing with our clients cutting edge technology, helping them save time, save money, and really scaling their business. Our mission here at MBS is really to serve you at the highest level and to help you increase profits and really stimulate growth. And I say that, you know, because, you know, stimulate growth comes from saving time. And all of these things really just help us give back to our families, our loved ones, and wherever we want to spend our time. So I always love to start my webinars with this and ask, what is your favorite app? You know, um, these days with technology, they uh, really just run the world. And uh, what I found was learning what people love. It just helps me implement better accounting systems for my clients and followers, you know, to teach them. So whether you're live or the replay, I would really love for you to share with me so that I see, uh, you know, what helps you and your business. So, so many people think that it is impossible to pay less taxes and they even, even think that they go to jail for it. Just Sunday night, I was on the phone with a cousin of mine and the phone call originally stemmed because uh, I was asking her a question. And when she realized what I do, she was like, hey, I have a question for you, Margo. And um, what ended up happening was she was selling a property and uh, you know, her person was telling her, hey, wait till next year so you could take your time paying your taxes. So what we did was it was kind of like a quick uh, 20 minute uh, tax plan. And I was able to save her $35,000 by refiguring where the money was gonna go. She wasn't putting it into another property right now. So she was really excited about that. And there's really no reason to pay taxes um, and, and, and make it a guess. Um, putting yourself in the know and the proactive position is what I pride myself and my clients by helping them do and uh, taping, taking these strategies to really reduce um, your hard earned money from being spent to the IRS and being able to put that into your family. So what I'm going to share in this webinar, oops, sorry about that. Oh God, sorry about that, is um, really about the different legislation updates, uh, American Jobs Plan, the Rescue Plan, American Families Plan. There's so many different things that happened. Um, even if some of you watched my previous webinar from last month of those updates, all of these things I'm gonna run through um, so that you can really see really what's happening and what to, what to focus on this year. Now, um, you'll see there was a leaked memo. We have the infrastructure passed by the Senate. We also have the COVID relief executive orders. We have the reconciliation budget and really the current state of what's next. You know, there's all this information. Uh, what do you do with it? And, and really, how do you respond to the tax law changes? A lot of people listen to this and they're like, they get frozen. You know, what do they do? And I want to try to help you with that um, as well. So, I just want to put a disclaimer that none of this is uh, into law, but a lot of these are proposed changes. So what we did was for this purpose of this presentation is we put together um, a lot of the updates uh, so that you can see a pile of, you know, from the timeline of everything, what's happening. And we're going to walk through the proposed legislation um, for 2021 in this webinar, and I'm excited to share that with you. Now, it's really been a windy road 
um, all of these legislations this year. If you think about it, you know, at first when it came out from COVID and then uh, when Biden came on, it's been like, you know, like if you think of, I always give this example of like when you think of the ocean and you look at the waves go by, that's really tax law. It's, it's just been a windy road. And however, at this point of this recording, none of it, um, you know, we are recording this webinar, none of what we will be discussed is actual law. Uh, I want you to get from this is to know where you're at so that you can make educated decisions and not uh, and not be surprised when the year is over what's going to be. Um, and that, that's really what's the helpful part uh, about all of this that we put together for you. Now, it's not actual law yet, and all that has been provided are plans and proposals. And um, I wanted to share that with you. With only one bill passed by the Senate, but stalled by the House. Um, that's really what we're up to right now. So there's no better time than to jump in and talk about the tax legislation update. Um, so what I did was here is that I, um, I put here, uh the timeline the description and you're going to see as i walk through the slides um it's going to go according uh to these things so that you can see over the course of the past year what happened so next the first thing that you're going to see the timeline uh in march 2021 uh the senate um house and the white house they put together the rescue plan and that was for 1.9 trillion dollars and the date was in march 2021 and the next step is really for it to be signed into law the next part to this is the White House, uh, the American's job plan, not too much later. If the proposal was released, um, and this was in March uh, 2021, about three weeks later, and this American jobs plan was $2.5 trillion. Right after that, we had a tad of a break, but not much. And then they put out there the American Families Plan. American Families Plan uh, was also April 28th, but the proposal was just released. Nothing is official. From there, uh, the politicians only, they put out there the budget resolution outline was $1.5 trillion. And the date on that was July 20th, 2021. I have to say around this time in the summer, I really thought it was going to be official, all of this, you know, and people were gonna be, have enough time to uh, get their tax plans in and really uh, prepare properly. But unfortunately the outline was released. Again, nothing was official yet. Then the Senate, they had the infrastructure package in August and it moved to house for vote pending. Um, so it took a tad more of a different step than what we saw uh, before that. And um, the, invest, the infrastructure package known as the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. And again, it was about two weeks later when they, when they put that out. Now um, they passed the budget resolution. Now the budget resolution, um, I'm really excited about that part to share to you. And that was really the next day. And that's all we know. So at this point, I think it's amazing to jump in and talk a little bit more about this um, and what the legislation uh, proposal entails. So Oprah Winfrey, I don't know if any of you watch her. Um, I just love this quote about integrity. Um, you know, when you're talking about tax law and stuff, it just seemed to feel like a good thing to share. Real integrity is doing the right thing. Nobody that knows that's going to know whether you did it or not. Uh, you know, so whether you're live or you replay, I'd love for you to share what you what you think about that, uh, what that quote. It just always resonated with me, you know, in terms of business to, to put that in. So let's talk about the rescue plan. The rescue plan was signed into law on March 11th, 2021. And that is for, it was for $1.9 trillion economic stimulus bill paid by the Senate. And uh, take a minute to look at this slide of all of the different things that are in this plan. Now, you will see um, here, the first thing is the additional economic uh, impact payments. Now, with those additional in impact payments, you have the expansion of the child tax credit. You have the funding for states and local governments. You have separate allocation of funding for capital projects. You have aid for homeowners and renters, which was a very big thing. Uh, small business credit initiative as well, expansion of the employee retention credit and paid leave credit program. I witnessed and I heard a lot of my clients talking about, um, you know, the expansion of the child tax credit and the employee retention credit that people were really, you know, interested in this stuff. 
And no major tax loan proposals were included in the rescue plan as it was focused on the economic stimulus um, from everything that was happening in 2020. Now, next, there was also the jobs plan. And in the jobs plan, uh, this one uh, was $2.5 trillion, the, the companion bill. And uh, Biden announced it March 31st, 2021. If you think about it, like when Biden came on, it's like he just kept doing and doing and doing, but everything was proposed. Nothing was official. Now, not a lot of us really pay attention to what's in this part of the bill, fixing highways, rebuilding bridges, upgrading ports, and the transit systems. We don't realize how important that stuff is to really take the time and see how much value that really has for us all. Delivering clean drinking water, a new electric system, and high-speed broadband, you know, all of these things from the root to really be able to upgrade, you know, for all of us. Solidify the infrastructure of our care economy by creating jobs and raising wages and benefits for essential home care workers. Um, now, uh, I'm actually going to close the window. I don't know if that noise. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I don't know if that noise was bothering anybody, but um, the what I we were talking about solidifying the infrastructure of our care economy by creating jobs and raising wages and benefits for essential home care workers. You know, I, I personally love when they do these things because, you know, when they talk about raising wages, you know, especially after all of this and helping the, the families uh, pass all of this time, it's just so important. Um, they revitalize manufacturing, the U.S. supply, invest in R&D. A lot of people don't realize what the R&D can really do for you and build transportation infrastructure as well. Now, the American Jobs Plan also included guidance on how to fund the infrastructure proposal with tax increases. You know, to, the guidance on this is pretty interesting, and uh, I'm going to share that shortly with you. Again, this is not law. This is proposed from the White House. And, um, you know, for you to just keep in mind as this is all simmering uh, as you're listening to this. So the American Jobs Plan, again, take a minute or so and look at the slide about all of the different things here. There's a lot of information and whether you, if you're watching the replay, especially um, or live, you're going to have to listen to this a few times to see, you know, all the information. And I and I and I want you to share the questions with us. Um, so set the corporate tax rate at 28 percent. The president's tax plan will ensure that the corporations pay their fair share of taxes by increasing the corporate tax rate to 28 percent. Now, increasing it to 28%, a lot of you, the first thing you're, you're thinking of is like, how am I going to pay for that? Now, a good way to monitor this is having a good bookkeeping and accounting system to track your costs, to really see your cash flow, to manage how much taxes you're paying. Businesses really think about it after the fact instead of as it's happening in real time. And I really want to encourage you to do these things and look at the, the report on a regular basis and increase that muscle that you have to look at them on a regular basis so that these things are not like another credit card bill or another mortgage bill at the end of the year, where I see people really going into financial distress and, and all these things uh, to take care of it. You know, this was also pretty interesting, discouraging uh, offshore offshoring by strengthening the global minimum tax for US multinational corporation. The president's tax reform proposal will increase the minimum tax on US corporations to 21% and calculate it on a country by country basis so it hits profit and tax havens. It will also eliminate the rule that allows US companies to pay zero taxes on the first 10%. See how specific this is on how they want to do it um, to take away the offshore part of this in businesses, um, but how it can really affect you as well. Now, this slide, you know, I'm going to jump to the middle of this where it says prevent US corporations from inverting or claiming tax havens as their residents. Now, a lot of us may not even do that, but it's good to keep in mind, like some people were really um, moving because of all of these things and they were like, based on the taxes of where they wanted to live. And, uh, you know, I just thought it was interesting how with COVID people really started to move their residents, not necessarily because of their kids' schools and stuff like this, based on taxes because people were going into true distress. 
Now, the United States is seeking a global agreement on a strong minimum tax through multilateral negotiations. This plan also denies deductions to foreign corporations on payments that could allow them to strip profits out of the United States if they are based in a country that does not adopt a strong minimum tax. So again, see how specific this is, how um, they are trying to make sure to keep everything within the US. And a lot of my business owners and my followers, all to all of you, I want you to realize when you do stuff out, how it may affect you. And uh, again, a good accounting system is gonna help you with this to really see where you're at with this, how it could affect you. Uh, deny companies expense deductions for offshoring jobs and credit expenses. President Biden is also proposing to provide a, a tax credit to support onshoring jobs. So listen to that really carefully, a tax credit to support onshoring jobs. He wants to reward people for uh, doing this inside the US instead of going outside. Now, it's also unfortunate because the, a lot of us started to depend on people outside and uh, it could change things on the, the people getting jobs from the outside into the US, how they feel about that relationships, how they grew and how that's all really gonna simmer for everybody. I mean, I, I just think about this in terms of like an accounting nightmare, you know, in the bookkeeping and the accounting system, because, you know, depending on uh, who it is and everything like that, uh, you know, the locations of people, US, non-US, you know, how to really track of that. Um, there's, there's really different things that have to happen for that. So continuing on this about the American Jobs Plan, um, eliminate loophole for intellectual property that encourages offshoring jobs and invest in effective R&D incentives. A complete elimination of the tax incentives and the Trump tax law for foreign derived intangible income, which gave corporations a tax break for shifting assets abroad and is ineffective at encouraging corporation to invest in R&D. So instead of R&D, people are going offshore and they want to take away, they, they don't want people to do that. All of the revenue from repealing the FD2 deduction will be used to expand more um, in the R&D investment incentives. So think about that, you know, again, how they, uh, you know, they, they are taking away from the offshore to bring everything in the US, you know, and how that really um, is really going to affect things. A 15% minimum tax on the income corporation used to report their profits to investors, known as book income, will backstop the tax plans, other ambitious reforms, and apply only to the very largest corporations. So, you know, when you uh, when it comes to the income corporations, this tax, um, the you know, knowing your book income versus uh, you know reported income, all these different levels, you're really going to need an intimate accounting system to be able to do this, so that um, you know your corporation is going to be able to really see where you're at with this tax, um, to see how it's really going to hit you. Now, um, if we talk about, let, let's take it from the top, again, taking a moment uh, to really look at the slide and, and, and digest it. Um, if you think about the eliminate tax preference for fossil fuels and make sure you know polluting industries pay for environmental cleanup. Uh, I, I just think it's so amazing how like after COVID, uh, this became so much more of a priority and top of mind for everybody, um, these aspects when it really wasn't before as much as it is now. The current tax code includes billions of dollars in subsidies, loopholes, and, and special foreign tax um, for the fossil fuel industry. As part of the president's commitment to, the, to put the country on the path to net zero emissions by 2050, his tax reform proposal will eliminate all these special preferences. So, you know, throughout time, he has a plan for this. The president also is proposing to restore payments from polluters to help cover the cost of cleanups. Now, you know, if you think about this, this behind the scenes of all of this, also the administration to keep this up, it's just amazing, um, all of this. They wanna ramp up the enforcement against corporations um, to make sure that corporations are paying their fair share um, of taxes. You know, they keep saying that to make sure the corporations pay their fair share. You know, it's like they feel like corporations aren't doing their due justice. And I, I, I can't say it enough where um, having a good bookkeeping and accounting system to see where you're at with this uh, at this given point in the year, it can benefit you so much, even if it's not into proposed, it, it's not official into law, so that you really can just see, um, you know, with all of these things that are ramping up to make good educated decisions. One month later, then Biden came out with an additional proposal and fact sheet about this. Um, 
uh, and uh, you know, Ishak, he just keeps coming, he just keeps coming at it. So let's jump into the family's plan and um, see what that is about. So this was in April, 2021, April 28th. This was for $1.8 trillion. I don't even think a lot of us could even realize how much money that really is. And um, what's included in there is four years of free higher education, providing direct support to children and families. I mean, me alone thinking of like the higher education, like I think that's amazing. My kids going to private school and being able to have these types of things. Um, extending key tax cuts and the American Rescue Plan for the benefit lower and the middle income workers and families, including the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit and the child independent tax care credit. All of these things um, is what we're going to uh, continue to talk about. The American Families Plan also includes guidance on how to afford this and the tax increases. You know, everything is proposed and they also have to figure out how everything is gonna get paid as well. It has to come from all angles. So they're gonna require financial institutions to report, listen to this one super, super carefully. If you're multitasking, come back to me. Um, because this is where it's going to hit everybody, requiring financial institutions to report information on account flows so that earnings from investments and business activity are subject to reporting more like wages already are. So we're so used to how our W-2 goes directly to the IRS, but people don't realize they think, you know, like Venmo, Zelle, all of these institutions where you get the money from, that it's not flowing and it is. And it's something for you to really think about. I had somebody just here the other day and uh, she wanted me to send her money by Venmo. And she was like, no, it's, I don't consider that taxable. Everything is taxable and everything is coming from the level of where you, uh, where you, where, where, uh, where you make it. It all depends. It's, it's not what you choose to be. Um, you know, it, it's, it's everything that you, it's really everything that you make now. Um, because it's treated like the wages, they're going to catch up much uh, faster than what we're used to, where these systems are so behind. Now, if you're on our newsletters, you'll see, um, and if you're not, feel free to um, ask for these videos. I had a interview with somebody from the IRS where she was talking about this, where um, coming after people for the money that they owe, and uh, people, you know, love it on the fact that if they moved and they didn't change the address and all sorts of things, but then it goes to like collections and all these sorts of higher levels that you, you don't really want. So you're, you're going to really want to put yourself into a true system, which we have like a nine step process for this to really help you keep up uh, with these types of things. Increase investment in the IRS, increase the top tax rate to 39.6. Now, this is very tricky. Households making over $1 million, the top 0.3% of all households will pay the same 39.6% on all their income, equalizing the rate paid on investment return and wages. You know, so it's like they're really trying to think about it, how to make that equal. You know, it's like, I wonder, do you even think that it is? And it really doesn't matter because, you know, uh, how much stay could we really have on this? And the practice of stepping up the basis in property for heirs who gains in access of in excess of a million dollars. This is something I see in a lot of wealth building when clients, after tax planning, where they want to plan for their um, for their heirs, you know, this is a big problem. Close the carried interest on the loophole so that the hedge fund partners will pay accordingly income rates on their income. And uh, this one, we don't realize enough because it's like an automatic deduction on our tax, 3.8% Medicare tax on earnings for those uh, who make over 400,000. These proposals garnered quite a bit of attention since the biggest question on whether or not the capital gains increase would be retroactive. Um, you know, this was like a big thing. And if you watched our last webinar, uh, you know, you'll see where I talked about this and if not, Still listen to the replay. There's a lot of great information in there too um, for you to know about this because again, all of this was proposed and not official. However, from April on, no additional proposal were released, but negotiations were occurring behind the scenes. So it's like they put enough stuff out there to get you worried, uh, but they're not necessarily putting anything out there. However, um, I just want to strengthen this enough is that, you know, there's, this is really the time for tax planning. This is the time for tax preparation so that you can see really where you're at. I was just working with a client 
um, this afternoon. And um, just by asking for his paperwork, he was like, he's like, Margo, I feel like I made back the money already where he saw so many things like that he wasn't doing and that we made part of the process. Uh, and a lot of the things that he wasn't looking at, it was simply because he would go into this like overwhelm when it came to it. And he appreciated the support. I put one of my teammates on and he loved it because um, we really like triple tasking what she was doing, I was doing, um, what he was doing. And it was, it was a really great meeting. So there was this leaked memo that I talked about at the beginning of this webinar, if you saw um, that I wanna go into it a little bit. Um, if, you, if you remember when I talked about this, you know, we said it was $1.5 trillion. Think about that a minute, you know, really how much that really is like on a leaked memo, it's, it's, it's insane. So uh, the leaked outline memo sparking the infrastructure bill spending proposals between uh, Manchin and Chuck Schumer. The debate to be going on after October 1st, the corporate tax rate to be 25%, the domestic uh, corporate minimum tax was going to be at 15, and then the ordinary one, 39.6%, and raising capital gains 28% all in, and, and the carried interest. The carried interest, I can see hurting so many people in the real estate developers industry and the professional services, you know, on ending the, the carried interest. A few days later, the Senate came to a bipartisan agreement and passed, I can't, it's hard, sometimes I mispronounce that, and passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. So let's talk about that bill and learn a little bit about that so that you can get an idea um, about this too. So Senate passed it August 10th, and uh, it contains $550 billion in new spending. And it did not include the major tax law changes that within this bill. And this was passed August 10th. Now what's part of this? $110 billion for roads and bridges, $66 billion for roads, $65 billion for the power grid, $65 billion for broadband, $55 billion for water uh, infrastructure, $47 for cybersecurity and climate change, $39 billion for public transit, 25 billion for airports, remaining including funds for safety, ports, buses, et cetera. You know, it's amazing how they, they really put it down and were able to help each area what they need, um, you know, uh, in, in each area. Now, the infrastructure proposed financing sources for new investment. This is, you know, pretty interesting and it, it could get very uh, tricky here. So, you know, take your time to look at the slide. It's, uh, if you're watching the replay, uh, hit pause and, you know, see what all the parts of this are. Reduce the IRS tax gap. Imagine that, we don't even think about that. Most of us are really just flustered at the concept of the IRS. Unemployment insurance program integrity, redirect unused unemployment insurance, relief funds, repurpose unused relief funds from the 2020 emergency relief registration, state and local investment in broadband infrastructure, allow states to sell or purchase unused toll credits for infrastructure, extend expiring customer customs user fees, reinstate Superfund fees for chemicals, uh, 5G spectrum auction proceeds, extend mandatory sequester, uh, strategic petroleum reserve sale, public-private partnerships, private act, uh, activity bonds, direct pay bonds, and asset recycling for infrastructure, macroeconomic impact of infrastructure investment. Think about all these things that are part of this, you know, in this bill. And during the infrastructure negotiations, the White House came out with its updates for addressing COVID that includes additional aid for small businesses. So what are the COVID plan updates? That was released in September. A lot of you probably know the PPP, the IDLE, like that was always like the biggest thing. And IDLE is still around. And IDLE, they removed the cap of 500,000 um, and returned to the statutory limit of 2 million. Um, and they streamlined the process for obtaining IDLE funds and institute additional controls to ensure that the funds are direct to businesses that most need the help. Now, it was, it's amazing, you know, because once the first one, we thought like, hey, like that was like an amazing release. Back when they took off that cap, like I had some clients that really, uh, because they didn't qualify for PPP and they wanted to do the IDLE, you know, you don't realize how all of this really just shifted people um, to help people um, in, in, in all sorts of ways. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear from you guys as well. You know, um, did you increase the idle? Is that something that you're thinking about? Is that something that you need? Um, it reminds me actually of another conversation I had with a different client of mine and she, um, you know, she wanted to take a loan and she was going to go to like a private investor, go into the bank. And she was talking about like over 10%. And when I let her know about the idol, I mean, this like alone just saved her. <laughs> like, uh, I forget how much money it was, but you know, uh, the, the interest that she was going to go off of that loan was like something crazy, like 10%. Now, sometimes a 10% loan, uh, which I'm going to do in a separate presentation can help you believe it or not. Um, it depends on what your intentions are. But uh, knowing that these loans, what they can help you is a really, really big deal. And the payback is just, it's, it's, like, it's like a gift and dream come true. It's like better than diamonds for a lot of us. Um, also to accelerate the process of selecting community partners for community navigators program established by the rescue plan aims to provide small business owners and understanding communities with resources to assist them in, in accessing federal relief funds. You know, like you hear that the, the, the level of detail of where they went to give people relief in all sorts of ways. Now, going back to at the beginning here where I, 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 I skipped over for a moment, uh, you know, the forgiveness application with PPP, the process became so streamlined and so easy that they that they worked together, the bank and the vendors, to make it even easier people to get forgiveness. It was, I, I loved watching it for clients, you know, because like, you know, people who came from tears and you, they got it and then the forgiveness, it's, 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 it's a dream. And I remember one client of mine, she said to me, she's like, She's like, I just can't believe it. I just can't like, and I was like, it was just, it was just a beautiful thing to watch. A few days later, the Ways and Means Committee finally released its proposed budget on how to finance the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. And the detailed, they, this detailed out exactly what tax law changes could be expected, but has since caused more polarization within the Democratic Party. I'm excited to show you now next the reconciliation bill and you're listening to this and you're probably like, why are you excited? You know, how this is gonna help business owners is just so, so important and getting you this information that you can now at this point in the year in November, have this at your fingertips so that you can make educated and healthy decisions is just, it's just so, so important for you all. So part of this, oh, did I, did I miss a slide? Okay. So released by the Ways and Means Committee on September 12th, has not gone to vote yet, it's still pending. Designed to enact President Biden, build uh, back the better agenda as laid out in his American Families Plan and the uh, American Job Plan. So again, in this slide, take some time to look at this. Um, there's a lot of information on these slides. If you're in the replay, take a moment to really jot this down to see you know, the corporate of the business level. Let's, let's take it from the top, the top corporate tax rate will increase starting in 2022 to 26.5 on income over $5 million. So many of us are kind of like more money, more money, and more money. But if we're not intentional with our money, making more money won't help you. It just puts you into this spiral. Income up to 400,000 will subject to a lower 18% uh, rate with the current 21% rate uh, remaining unchanged for income between 400,000 and 5 million. So imagine that really. Um, how they section that. Personal service corporations will not be eligible for graduate rates and all income will subject to 26.5 rate. I can't say it enough with all of this, how, uh, you know, where they're bringing things from offshore within the US and the tax rate increasing, it's no time ever where it, people see it as optional having a bookkeeping and accounting system um, or they take it for granted where they have their mother, their sister, whatever doing it and not really a outsourced uh, partner, you know, to really show you so that you have control of this stuff and not be like in the back seat. The benefits of the graduated corporate rate will phase out by additional 3% tax on corporate income above 10 million up to a maximal additional of 287K. Now here, there's also all sorts of things, and um, you know, uh, let's let's just take it from the top. Um, 
uh, amends IRC to apply the interest limitations at the partner or S corporation shareholder level, rather at the entity level. So at the shareholder level, rather than the entity level, um, as it is, I tell you, when I work with my with my shareholders, they don't even look at the report. You know, so now whether if it's at the entity level or the shareholder level, um, I can't stress it enough to all of you who are listening to this, how important it is to look to your reports to see this so that you can see, you know, the limitations on what this really means. Limits the carryover of business introductions disallowed, effectively introduce increases the rates on both um, the GILTI and the FD2 income, requires country by country treatment of foreign tax credits, requires a partner whose partnership um, interest becomes worthless to treat the loss at a capital loss, you know, under this provision. So um, sometimes people use partnerships loosely. And, you know, once I dial into their businesses, I realize that they're not even like on paper, like real partners. So when you have a true partnership, like whether it's a PLLC um, or whatever, you know, there's, I, I, I can go to town on corporations. And if you're interested in learning about that, you know, reply to this. We have an amazing series about learning the the corporation series, the corporations, and I share that here because um, when I did the interview with this IRS agent, um, like one of the things she said was like, "Hey, you know, so many people are in the wrong entities, and people are guided to the right entity. Their 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 tax attorney tells them which entity." but it doesn't necessarily serve them. And it really needs to be a partnership of the tax attorney with the accountant, um, because what it really entails behind it. And, you know, so for instance, with an S corporation, if you don't make certain amounts of money, it doesn't, it's not worth it to be in an S corp, because if you're not taking a salary as a business owner, you have a whole demands of the entity structure for no reason at all. This is why planning is so, so, so important. And, uh, you know, again, if you're listening to this and you have like a uh, weak accounting system or if you want to strengthen it, we have an amazing series on uh, how to build a tax team. And I built this this blog series on purpose because so many people are like, oh, I have an accountant, Margot. I don't need a bookkeeper, but I have a CPA. They really don't even know what it means. And um, I'm, I'm just sharing this with you because all of these things, depending on who's guiding you, it's super, super important. Which, which really reminds me of another quick story. I was uh, I was working with a vendor and she was like, she's like, yeah, my, my tax attorney does all my accounting. He keeps track of all my account expenses. And I was like, whoa, like break that down. A tax attorney can't, you know, there are, they, they, they might be trained to do that, but the tax attorney is, in, is, is for tax law and accountant does for accounting. You know, so you gotta be really intentional on, on who you use for this. So corporate and business provision tax increases include, um, you know, let's just talk about these, these few things. Subjects, uh, non-resident aliens to 30% withholding tax for interest, income received from a company in which they own at least 10% of interest, eliminating the portfolio interest exemption for such individuals. Now, uh, non-resident aliens may not even know what this even means, you know, uh, alone to have, to have this now increases the requ required holding period on carried interest from three years to five. That's really going to help me people to be more intentional with their decisions. Bars taxpayer with AGI greater than 400,000 from qualifying from 75% or 100 exclusions. And this one I tell you also is like, if you're in a situation where you have combined income with a spouse, you know, uh, it's really measuring the two of you to know where you're at together if, especially if you're filing together, it's just so important to look at those situations because you see you see on all these things how it fluctuates. And again, there's no time better with tax planning than ever before like this now. Um, I mean, look at let's take it from the top here on this uh, reconciliation budget bill. Expands the constructive sales and wash the sale uh, sale rules of the IRC. Digital assets and currencies disallow deductions deductions for conservation easements made by pass through entities. Now, people, you know, 
even if they're using past due entities correctly, um, you know, is my is my two cents here on this. Um, but let's you know, let's stay focused on this for, for this focus of this webinar, um, where the value of the easement exceeds 250 percent of the partner's aggregate basis is the partnership that relates to the property and applicable retroactively um, for after December 2016. Accelerates the termination of the employer credit will allow certain S corporation to reorganize as partnerships without triggering any tax done in 2020, uh, 22 and 23. Now, I, I have a lot of people who I know that they're in S corporations and let alone like they think that they're in a partnership but on paper that they're not. This is just so, so key to really know like it does your, if you have a partner, what's your agreement with him? Before making it official and, and having the right partnership, the right corporation, what your agreement is with them, their percentages, then you have the corporate tax level of, of what you're going to pay and the right entity. So there's so many different things here, um, especially in the real estate industry to be so careful, you know, as you see. Extends the FICA tip credit to receive um, tips received in providing beauty services to a client or a customer. Increased work opportunity credit for targeted groups other than the summer youth employees to 50% of the first 100,000. Delays the amendment to the IRC that would have required research and experimental expenses, you know, over five years rather than being deducted. A lot of people depend on this, um, you know, so instead of being deducted, it's going to be over five years, you know, so looking at that period, it's something, again, where you have to have a very good accounting system or like myself, you know, a very good CFO working for her, for you behind the scenes that helps you with those year end things, uh, you know, which reminds me also of another uh, thing where I, you know, I share people on dangerous tips uh, from year to year where you can't just automatically use the numbers from last year to this year, you have to take the time to research it and make sure that it's carrying over from year to year. Because uh, like I remember when I spoke to that lady from the IRS, you know, they catch that and you want to be in the driver's seat there. So yeah, more on the reconciliation budget, the individual provisions include creating a new top tax rate of 39.6 for income over 400,000. 500,000 for joint, 450 for the head of household, 225 for married filing separately status. Creates a new 25% capital gain rate uh, for taxpayers with incomes who fall into the 39.6 income tax bracket. Um, this is after September 13th, 2021. Applies to the net investment um, income tax to ordinary trade. And you know, see how it's like super specific individuals over 400,500 for different joint followers. Um, you know, so uh, when you have this, especially like if you're a couple or a partner, um, really to look at this and be intentional um, with your tax plan and your tax preparation. The caps allowed qualified business income deductions under 199 to 400,000 for an individual and uh, for 500,000 for joint. Permanently disallow excess business losses, eliminating the original sunset of the disallowed at the end of 2025, provide for carried forward and disallowed losses for future tax years. I, I can go to town on this part of how many people, you know, who depend on the on losses because they, they just have this thing against paying taxes. You know, if I tell you paying taxes is really not that bad of what you're entitled to, because on the other side, you could be losing the abilities to get loans and uh, you know, building your business up, if like you do want the partnership and all of those things, there's another side to looking at the positive of paying taxes. Um, so um, adding new IRC, providing a 3% surtax on income over 5 million. Now back to this of income over 5 million, like I can go to town here on what people think if, even if their income is the 5 million, because some people think, you know, depending on where it came from, if it counts into that, and again, you know, this is something in your accounting system to really help you track. Uh, retirement savings provisions include, this is so important, especially in a tax plan, prohibits any additional contributions to IRAs. If the aggregate balance of all IRAs and defined contribution accounts, such as 401k, exceeds 10 million, if the taxpayer has taxable income over 400, single and married, 
425 for head of household or 450 for married filing joint. Now, some of you could be looking at the numbers and be like, no, that's not me. You know, and it really depends on your situation. Maybe your, your, your spouse is having a better year. You don't really realize what your sales are up to because your accounting is behind. All of these things are so, so, so important requires animal, uh, annual minimum distractions from retirement accounts. If aggregate account balances exceed 10 million, a 50% of the balance in excess of 10 million. Pay super, super attention to that. Requires annual minimal distributions from retirement accounts. If aggregate account balances exceed 10 million. So important. Um, I tell you, so many of my, my clients, they don't even realize how much they have in there, that, uh, let alone for it to be uh, required. Now, other provisions that I thought were important to share here, if aggregate retirement balances exceed 20 million, it requires the taxpayer to distribute uh, distribute a hundred percent of any access of excess with Roth IRAs and, and 401ks and additional defined contribution plans. Again, I can't tell you how many clients don't even realize how much money is there, let alone if it's the right plan. Um, so now they're going to tell you that you have to distribute it. Prohibits Roth conversions of over of after tax contributions. Prohibits an IRA from investing in an entity which account holder gains owns more than ten percent of the interest. So all of these things need to be super super official in the right agreements and the right corporate structure because um, if you're just throwing yourself into all of these things, you know you're gonna you're just gonna be part of all these rules that are gonna make your life so much more complicated. You know, taking the time and being intentional on these things is really so important. And I'll tell you, proactiveness, proactiveness, planning, proactiveness and planning is just so, 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 so key. When you take care of your money, your money takes care of you. Now, um, still talking about the budget bill, there's a lot, there's, there's the, you know, the budget bill had a lot going on. It accelerates the provisions um, applicable to the state gift returning the exemption equivalent to uh, pre-TCJA uh, 5 million base, requires the inclusion of the assets of any uh, grant or trust owned by the taxpayer, prohibits the use of valuation discounts for lack of marketability and lack of control when valuing non-business assets. Now, uh, again, uh, with the gift tax purposes, uh, you know, people take that loosely and uh, wealth management along with planning for that is so key as you see here, um, you know, with this part. So this $3.5 trillion proposal has not gone to a vote, it's still pending. You see that there was a lot of information. I'm gonna tell you, you know, no bills were signed, vote abandoned. The house attempted to pass it um, while negotiations continue. Negotiations went into the late night on Thursday and Friday and the last week of September, but no bill was voted on. You know, it's amazing. I'm just gonna go back for a minute, you know, like how much is really here um, for this? Um, they're paying a super, super attention to detail, but yet it's it's not um, official. And I want you to know that at this point they're due to different types of bills waiting to be voted on. And some legislators are trying to make it a package deal to include both bills to be voted on simultaneously. So it's like, they're talking about it as you saw the timeline, March about a few weeks apart, then April and so on. And now they wanna do this simultaneously so that they can get it out there. Here's a recap of how they broke it down. And uh, the Senate, the infrastructure bill was passed on August 10th and the reconciliation bill waiting on the house until it comes to Senate. The house sitting on the house pending vote for the infrastructure bill and the reconcili reconciliation bill introduced as a bill to the House on September 12th. You know, uh, a lot of us are, are listening to this and we're like, what, what do we do now? What we do now is we really start out preparing our planning so that whatever this is the situation, you're in the know and you, you really know what um, can help you. So what comes next? Um, what's potentially coming? That, that's really the question. Now, uh, the policy of increased capital gains tax rate, the timeline of 25 to 39 uh, tax on capital gains, potential retroactive enactment as of April um, or September, increase in corporate tax rate 25 to 28, now, increase in top individual 39.6. A lot of individuals can get hurt on that. 
removal of stepped up basis for gains of over a million, carried interest. What I personally worry about is the individual ones because too many, I find too many individuals, you know, they don't pay attention to this. Carried interest um, also either ends completely or it increases the required period. Another thing is, is applies NIIT tax to ordinary trade. And the timeline of this is over 400,000. Caps qualified business income, the corporate domestic minimum tax, potentially offered instead of you know, uh, raising uh, to 28. So I know I said a lot of information at some point I was slow and fast and whatever, you know, so um, I just want to share one more thing is that, you know, 8.2%, right, is what they measured the top 400 wealthiest Americans pay on their income as measured by a growth in net worth includes unrealized capital gains. You know, they had this formula, I thought it was like a, just a pretty cool thing to share. And it's really, it's just something to think about, um, you know, uh, while we're learning all of this in this webinar. And uh, you can see now with the wealth taxes, real estate holdings, which already have an assessed value for state property taxes, publicly traded stock, um, stock which can be valued at a market value. And, you know, um, with that, you know, uh, there, there's so many things that we learned tonight. And uh, what I would love for you to do is, you know, respond to this email and let me know when, when you're free. I'd love to know uh, what you think you could implement into your business, what you think you want to work on from listening to this, because uh, I really just want to help you uh, it, it, see what you're overpaying in taxes, what strategies we can put in. Uh, I mean, you know, just a casual conversation, 20 minutes, we were able to save, I was able to save my cousin $35,000. Um, and really what to do about the tax tracking le uh, legislative changes in the future, uh, because this was requiring so much um, uh, tracking that businesses are not set up for this. You know, like I, I had a client, uh, I needed the, her payroll stuff and like she was just so upset that we had to take the payroll reports off the system and save them so that we can update QuickBooks for her file approval. Like she just didn't, she wasn't, she was having trouble following it. And, and as she, you know, got, let herself uh, hear it, you know, she realized like we're so used to these platforms, but what happens is you have to take that information off that platform and save it on your side, whether it's Google Drive, Dropbox, uh, whatever, whatever system that you have, your own server, and, and get that on there. So which specific strategies do you need for the current law, the proposed law, all of these things? I really want to help you. So I look forward to you um, responding, letting me know, share what you thought, if it was this was what helpful, if anything else that you might want to see. Um, and uh, what we'll do is also on the email, we'll put the link uh, to my calendar. Maybe that'll help you schedule sometimes um, if you're having trouble with that and you just want to make sure to get this in. I'm only going to be doing this for a short period of time as I, uh, you know, um, uh, as I offer this, clients really, you know, they take advantage of this because they really want to plan and keep more money into their pocket. I look forward to doing that for you. And um, one of the clients of ours, I wanted to share this, um, you know, one of the things that she said, you know, people don't realize how the benefits of outsourcing you know, really can help them. You know, a lot of business owners, they want to like sit on top of the, the accounting uh, because they want access to them. But really what happens is, is that you're paying for that person's time and you're micromanaging them but you're not getting access to a team. And in the outsource capacity, like she was able to, I remember when I met her, she was like in a basement and now she's part of all these magazines and stuff doing these like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous homes. And I was like, wow, you know, it's so amazing to be behind this. And um, I really thank you for attending, whether you're live or the replay. And um, I, I enjoy serving you. I enjoy sharing these updates with you. If you love this and you just want to say thank you, please let me know that too. Um, from my heart, I appreciate that you spent the time to listen. And um, I look forward to having you on the call with me and uh, so I can learn more about you and your business. Talk soon and I will uh, see you on our call together.